that we respond to all the time, so we should be used to things uh, that are asking for a response, or, and, and hopefully we'll respond to those. I, I know uh, I didn't get quite the response that I wanted one time, you know, I came home from work, and Katie is just, you know, I don't know, three or four year old, and she says, Dad, and she's, she's my middle daughter, she's, she's now uh, 11, and she says, uh, Dad, I can't see, my hair's in my eyes. And I said, well, man, I'm a, I'm a guy, I'm your dad, and I always got a solution for a problem. And so I grabbed a pair of scissors, and I just cut across the top of her forehead, and she could see. And I thought, man, see, I, I took care of that. But then when her mom got home, she came in the door, and she said, immediately says, Katie, what happened to your hair? And she said, I couldn't see, and Dad, like, cut my hair, and so I could see now, Mom. And it, it wasn't a response I was expecting at all, because rather than any kind of appreciation or anything for, for my good deed, she ran to her room and began to cry in, in our bedroom. And I thought, man, not the response I was hoping for. Our, our youth pastor, children's leader, uh, Brock Rayley, uh, we, were, we were in our staff meeting this last week with Sue and, and Brock and I and Johnny, and, and the topic of driving, you know, with our spouses present and stuff came up. You know, Sue was saying she came back from her vacation, and Steve wasn't feeling very good, but he insisted on driving all the way back from California, because and Sue goes, you know how controlling Steve is? I said, yeah, he's OCD, only with Steve, we call him CDO, because even that needs to be in alphabetical order for him to be okay with him. And, but then Brock shared a story, he said, yeah, because we know with Brock, Cammy, if you know Brock and Cammy, Cammy often drives, and Brock says, yes, because Cammy gets nervous with my driving and stuff, and so she, she needs to drive and stuff. He says, only though, when we're like getting back from Portland, you know, sometimes we got appointments in Portland on the way back, sometimes she's a little tired, and he'll say, babe, I can drive, like, it's just I-5, it's just drive straight, let me, let me drive, and, and so she'll say, okay, and then he says, when she's just about asleep, just almost on the verge of falling asleep, he puts on the brakes and yells, ah! <laughs> and she immediately comes awake because like, Brock, like, I don't know, I'm surprised that, one, your wife's still alive all these years, heart, and that you're still alive, you know, both these things are just amazing, but he was getting the response from her that I guess he wanted, and thankfully they're still married and doing good and things and stuff, but, <laughs> but Palm Sunday is also about a time of Response. Palm Sunday is, is kind of a, 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 an era in which I'd say there was a fickle response because as, as Chelsea said in her music, there's a time where Jesus is coming to enter in Jerusalem and people go behind, before him and they're laying down their cloaks and even it's called Palm Sunday because they're laying down palm branches and kind of what they would do in sign of a king coming into a city. Like a king is coming, they'd lay down palm branches in front of him celebrating that and they say things like, Hosanna to the son of David, blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And I think what an amazing section of scripture because it shares us a brief time in mankind's history in which the whole world for a while seemed to acknowledge Jesus as king. Like I, I would love that to happen today, or I think I would love that. Maybe, you know, I know there was misunderstandings here, and there'd be misunderstandings today about who Jesus really is, but for a brief segment in our history, there was a time where it seemed like the world actually knew who Jesus was and that he was king. He wasn't just compromised or thrown to the side or, you know, and, and, and not really paid attention to. And thought, wow, he's a king. And, and, and at some point in the scripture, Jesus says he would never entrust himself to men because he knows us. He knows men, mankind. And uh, less than a week later, this same crowd that wanted to make him their king had completely deserted him, and instead of Hosanna in the highest, they were screaming out, crucify him, crucify. Now, that, that's the most kind of fickled response I, I can think of, although you see it even today. We, we, I, I think uh, these, these people weren't just the only flipper floppers of, of our day. Our, today's world, we see flip-flopping, going back and forth, and, and, and people betraying. You know, if you ever wondered how long mankind has been fickled, or how long they've been unfaithful to each other, or betrayed one another, or exploited, exploited or taken advantage of one another, it's been happening for a long time. We got this just e exemplified for us in the story of Jesus, and Palm Sunday to, to Easter, in less than a week, a man goes from, hey, let's make him king, to crucify him. And, and so you may ask, you know, this Palm Sunday, boy, is there anybody that's faithful? 
Is there anybody that will, will continue until the end? Is there anybody that really loves Jesus with their, all their heart and things? And I think it's important on Palm Sunday, I try and make a tradition of Palm Sunday to help some people feel the bitterness uh, of, of the cross before they get to, uh, to fully appreciate the victory of the resurrection that we'll talk about next week. I think we need to feel the bitterness. We need to know that the sin did enter the world and things are not as they should be and things are broken in mankind. If you just read the papers or watch the news, you'll know there's some brokenness with mankind. Things are not as they should be. But sometimes you wonder, is there, any, is there anybody that's going to even be faithful to the end? Is there going to be people that will really love Jesus like they say they love Jesus and continue to the end? Steve Farr has a, has a, a, a book called Finish Strong. He wrote a book, Finish Strong, and in his book he talked about a pastor who was a college minister, a campus minister, uh, maybe like Nathaniel, but at the college level. And he had a, a staff of about 20 people that was trying to reach this ca campus for Christ. And, and they loved the Lord together, and they had some people come in. And this group, even after they graduated from college, as they were doing college ministry together with the staff and stuff, they graduated and went on to other things. And Steve Farr's friend that wrote this down said, the cover of his Bible, the people that made a pact, they were going to serve of the Lord until the end. And he said, throughout life, this man would touch base with his friends and as he 